In this tutorial, we will be discussing the relationship of subatomic particles. Elements are defined by the number of protons. It is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom that identifies a particular element. The number of protons in the nucleus of an atom is called the atomic number and is given by the symbol Z. So that's one of the numbers that you're going to see on the periodic table. In chemical reactions, atoms often lose or gain electrons to form particles called ions. The electrons are on the outside, the protons and neutrons are on the inside of the nucleus. And so when things are exchanging in chemical reactions, it's these electrons that are doing it. Furthermore, it's typically the valence electrons, which are the outermost. It's the valence electrons that are the ones that are the furthest away from the nucleus that are the ones that are losing and gaining. So that way, reactions can occur. Positive ions are called cations. Now, in order to become a cation, you have to lose electrons. Remember, electrons are negatively charged. So if you lose a minus one, the two negatives cancel out to be positive, making it a positively charged ion. So therefore, by contrast, anions, the negatively charged, gain electrons. You're gaining that minus one, so you're adding minus ones, and it's going to become a negative charge. The charge of an, anion, uh, the charge of an ion is shown on the upper right-hand corner of the symbol. So here's the symbol of just the atom. Here's the symbol for a specific isotope, which we'll be discussing at the end of this tutorial. This is the mass number up here, which is the number of the protons and the neutrons added together in the nucleus. This down here is the atomic number, which once again, as we stated here, the atomic number is the number of protons. And then finally up here we can determine what the charge is. We can determine how many electrons they are by looking at the charge. Because the charge is equal to the number of protons minus the number of electrons. So for this particular ion, it's an ion of magnesium with 12 protons. Magnesium will always have 12 protons because that's what dictates what magnesium is. Protons and neutrons are 26, so that means I still have 12 protons, which if I subtract those two means I have 14 neutrons, and it has a positive two charge. Well, that means it's 12 minus something is equal to a positive two, which means we have 10 electrons here. Ion charges are usually written in the magnitude of a charge first followed by the sign of the charge. So one positive, two positive, one negative, and so on. So in reactions, lithium atoms lose an electron. Here is lithium. This is, some, this is a picture of something you might see on the periodic table. There's several different versions of the periodic table and what you'll see in the box. This one tells you this is the atomic mass and this is the atomic number and it gives you some more information in there to help. Not all periodic tables will give you that much information. So here's our atomic number. That means lithium, that three would be on the bottom. It doesn't say anything about how many neutrons it has or the mass number so I don't put anything on the top. It says that it's going to lose one electron. So that means in a neutral atom, it would have three because the positives and the negatives cancel out to be zero. But it's lost an electron here, so it only has two, which is giving it a positive one charge. 
So I'm doing one positive in the upper right hand corner. The number of protons minus the number of electrons is the charge of the ion. And there you go. That's how we got those numbers, the three protons from the atomic number, the two electrons because it lost one of those electrons. It originally had three because it was neutral. Let's look at another one. Let's look at fluorine. This time it gained an electron. So this periodic table gives you a little bit less information. It still gives you the atomic mass and the atomic number. They will typically at least give you those two. So I have the atomic number of nine. That means I have nine protons. And a neutral atom, without any of the electrons being changed, that means I have nine electrons. Because the protons have to equal the electrons for it to equal zero. So ordinarily this would have nine electrons. But we've gained one electron, so instead of nine electrons, we now have ten. So protons are nine minus ten Protons are always written first there, gives us a negative one charge. So it would be fluorine, atomic number of nine, one minus. Once again, it doesn't tell me how many neutrons it is, so I don't know what isotope it is. The number associated with the letter A above the main group column of the periodic table, one through eight, these numbers here, gives the number of valence electrons in the elements that, in that column. Remember, I stated that the valence electrons are the outermost electrons. They're the ones who are actually participating in the reaction. The key to predicting the charge acquired by an element is its position on the periodic table relative to the noble gases, so how far away it is. The main group elements tend to form ions that have the same number of valence electrons as the nearest noble gas. So if I look here, fluorine is one row away from being neon. So it gains one electron in order to make that happen. That didn't show up real well. Whereas over here, let's look at calcium. Rather than gaining to go to the right, it ends up losing instead because it's easier to lose. So these lose two electrons for calcium. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get closest to that noble gas arrangement because that's the most stable. And so 1A tends to lose one electron. 2A tends to lose two electrons. 3A tends to lose three electrons. And then four is the halfway mark to eight, and then it reverses. Instead of losing, they now gain. So that gives these spe rows specific charges that are typically used. So row 1A is usually a plus one. Row 2A is usually a plus two. Row 3A is usually a plus three, which is why you see these numbers up here. Four and five, they looks like they skip, although five could be a minus three. Six is a minus two, because you gain two electrons. And row seven, which is the halogens, could be a minus one, because they only need to gain one electron. All right, so let's use this in practice. What is the symbol for an ion having 15 protons? So that tells me I'm looking for the atomic number of 15. So let's look for 15. It's right here. It's phosphorus. And 18 electrons. So that means we need to figure out what the charge is. So it's the protons minus the electrons. Gives me 15 minus 18, which is minus 3. So it's 3 minus. Notice once again in the fifth group, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, skip minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, that matches up. That follows the trend. Let's try this again. Halide, halide ions. Halides are halogens. They're right here. Those are typically a minus 1 charge, or 1 minus, because of that it needs to gain 1 electron.
Let's look at the oxygen ion. It's right here. Oxygen, atomic number of eight. It's two spots away from being a noble gas. It needs to gain one, then gain another. That's going to be a minus two charge. Once again, plus one, plus two, plus three, skip, minus three, minus two, minus one. This is a tricky question. Look at the difference in the words. We're looking at oxygen again. This one says ion, and I just wanted to throw this one in there in case you have a trick question in the future. Oxygen ion, ion is one with a charge. Oxygen atom is a neutral atom, a neutral particle, which means it has no charge. What is the symbol for an ion having 12 protons and 10 electrons? So, protons, that's our atomic number. So, 12 is right here. We're looking for magnesium. And that actually automatically crosses everything else out. But let's go ahead and finish. So, magnesium, atomic number of 12. 12 minus 10 is equal to a positive 2 which is why we have a plus two up here. Once again, plus one, plus two, plus three, skip, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero. How many electrons are in scandium ion SC three minus? So scandium is right here. We know that the charge is a plus three, and we know that the charge is the protons minus the electrons. We can look at the atomic number and say the, elect the protons are 21. So 3 is equal to 21 minus the electrons. Therefore, I know by doing math, 21 minus 3 is going to come out to be 18 electrons. Which atom has the same number of protons as nickel 59? Here's nickel. Remember this number on top is for isotopes. Those are the protons and the neutrons added together. That 28 would be written on the bottom. That 28 is for a specific atom, a specific element. So therefore, in order to have 28 protons, it has to be nickel. It doesn't matter how many neutrons it has. And what matters is what the atomic number is, the number of protons. All right, so that leads us into isotopes a little bit closer. All atoms of a given element have the same number of protons. We've said that several times now. They do not necessarily have the same number of neutrons. This will affect the mass number. This is the atomic number. Atoms with the same number of protons, meaning that they're the same element, but a different number of neutrons are called isotopes. All elements have their own unique percent natural abundance of isotopes, which basically means how they're found in nature, the percentage in which they are found in nature. So just to give you some kind of an idea, naturally occurring neon contains three different isotopes. Neon 20, which is 90.48% of the time, that would be its natural abundance. Neon 21, which happens 9.25% of the time, that's its natural abundance. And neon 22, which is 0.27%, which is that natural, so 0.27% of the time, it's going to be neon 22. All right, so while looking at this, neon 20, 
every single one of these, neon 20, neon 21, neon 22, all have 10 protons 100% of the time because the number of protons determines what element it is. The neutrons are what's changing. So when we're looking at this, the notation of isotopes for a chemical symbol or a chemical name can be followed by the hyphen. And this is one way of identifying or stating the isotope. So we have the chemical name or the symbol dash the mass number. So the neon... NE for the chemical symbol dash 20, NE 21, NE 22, or they can write out the name. This over here, remember, is the mass number, not the atomic number. This is the protons and the neutrons added together. They can also be symbolized with a symbol, which is what we've been doing with the mass number on top, the atomic number on bottom, and then the chemical symbol. So for each of these, this would be neon, 10, 20 on top because that's the mass number. This is the protons and the neutrons added together. This is just the protons. The next one, neon, atomic number of 10, now the mass number of 21. Neon, atomic number of 10, mass number of 22. Notice the top number is changing. The bottom number is remaining the same. All right, so here are the equations we've discussed. Protons plus the neutrons is the mass number. That's the top number. Protons plus the atomic number. Protons is the atomic number, sorry. Protons is equal to the atomic number. That's the bottom number. And protons minus the electrons is equal to the charge. And this is on the upper right. These are on the left. All right, so how many electrons, protons, and neutrons are in iron 3 ion? So iron is here. We want electrons, protons, and neutrons. So that means these are electrons, these are protons, these are neutrons. So the protons, we look on the periodic table and we find that the atomic number is 26. That means this number here has to be 26. So we're good. The electrons, protons minus the electrons is equal to the charge. We know that the charge is a positive 3. So 3 is equal to... 26 minus x, which gives us 23. So that means, here we go, these do not match up. Just to confirm yourself, just to make sure that you're right, it has a positive 3 charge, which means it's going to have fewer electrons. So 26 minus 3, that's how you got to 23. And then the neutrons, I know we already know it's going to be A, but let's just go through this. The mass number is equal to the protons plus the neutrons. So that means that 56 on the upper left-hand corner is equal to 26 plus the neutrons. Subtract this out and you get 30. This is going to be our last practice one for this tutorial. The nucleus of... Fluorine 19 contains, all right, so here's fluorine over here. We know that its atomic number is 9. Which means that we have 9 protons. So, we can cancel out the things that say 19. Because that 19 is not the number of no, uh, protons and it's not the number of neutrons. It's the number of protons and neutrons. Alright, so we're looking at the nucleus. Ask yourself, what's in the nucleus? Is it the electrons or is it the neutrons? The nucleus contains the protons and the neutrons. So therefore the electrons are not in it. They're on the outside. So 
we can confirm that it's supposed to be 10 by saying 19 is equal to 9 plus the neutrons. Subtract this over and the neutrons are 10. And that's how you solve for these problems.